Dr. Luke begins the book of Acts by telling us that this is the work that Jesus continues to do through the power of the Spirit and through the formation of his church. We pick up this book right after the resurrection of Jesus where he gathers together his disciples and he gives them a mission. He says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the Holy Spirit is going to empower you. He's going to come upon you to give you the ability, the power to fulfill this beautiful mission. After Jesus promises the power of the Holy Spirit, he delivers on his promise. In Acts chapter 2, there's 120 believers worshiping in the upper room when the Holy Spirit descends on them at this, at this event that we call Pentecost. And at that point, the church is born. The church grows to become this community, this beautiful community, where people sell their possessions and give to anyone who has need. And then sort of an interesting thing happens in the book of Acts. The church starts getting persecuted. That persecution drives the church out. And we see Philip in, in Acts chapter 8 share the gospel in Samaria. And the church in Samaria is born. In Acts chapter 10, we see the Gentiles are included in the mission of God. In Acts chapter 11, we see this church at Antioch birth. It's a multi-ethnic church that signifies the manifold beauty of God and the fact that his gospel is for every person. Antioch becomes this hub, this sending church where the Apostle Paul comes to teach and, and that church sends the Apostle Paul out on his first missionary journey. He goes all over the Mediterranean, planting churches, equipping leaders, sharing the gospel, and this movement of God that started in Jerusalem, spread to Judea, to Samaria, is starting to spread to the ends of the earth. called this series, the study of the book of Acts, the movement, because we've been tracing the movement of Jesus through the work of the Spirit and the formation of his church. But we've also called it the movement because we hope that this study will encourage us to move, that God will stir some things in us that will change us and cause us to look at the beautiful horizon that he has, not only for us as individuals, but for us as a church, and to start to dream, what might our chapter of the book of Acts be? What verse might he invite us to write as we follow the same spirit, as we're part of his same intention of building his church? What might God have for us to do?